I got Lucas McGill here. Tommy Lepore here from Blue Springs South. Brett Norfleet. Hello, everyone. Welcome inside the Red Earth Production Studios for this edition of YBM Cast, powered by Game 7 Baseball, Game7Baseball.com. Game 7 Baseball is rolling up this week, uh, headed down to Branson, Missouri for the uh, Shamrock Shootout. I think it's going to be a little chilly down there in Branson, but the sun will shine, so positive things. At least get on the field, right? So if you're uh, still looking for some tournaments, getting into that I th- i'm sure there's still some openings probably left for the uh, uh midland invitational you can jump in there that should be a good tournament with game seven baseball out of bridgeton municipal athletic complex otherwise known as bmac i love that stuff there you go so make sure you go to game seven baseball.com get your stuff set up and ready to go i should have brought my gear over so here we go This is our subscriber contest, man. If you're out there and you haven't subscribed yet, if you've been watching and you haven't subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. We got a contest going on. We're trying to get to 1,000 subscribers here. We got the old bucket of baseballs. Ta-da. It's a dozen. It's a dozen baseballs. Are they in there? Yes, they are. Oh, okay. From Prime Sports Midwest, <laughs> Matt's got the old 36-inch uh, Louisville Slugger Fungo there that this comes with it. This is a big fungo. <laughs> <laughs> Hit some jacks, right? Uh, sure. We're going to probably play some uh, uh, baseball golf with it or something like that, you know? I hope whoever gets this fungo knows how to hit fungos. Otherwise, it is going to break the first day. <laughs> well, that's what we hope, right? <laughs> Not you hope mention. that it does, so they buy another one. <laughs> there you go. And we also have the uh, portable Marucci hitting net. Um, this goes to the person we, you enter in to win. You got a shot to win this coach's uh, stuff here from Prime Sports Midwest. Those nets are great. These right here? Oh, yeah. They're certainly better than the old Jugs ones. Remember those that yeah. flipped up and smacked you in the face and all that yeah, stuff? Yeah, these nets are awesome. That was pretty horrible. So there you go, folks. We're going to drop that down. Make sure. Subscribe. Also, throw that down in the comment. We love Prime Sports Midwest. We got some gear coming uh, from those guys as well. So, looking forward to that. Let's get into it today. And, oh, wait, I got I got to say one more thing to uh, Scott Harris, representing the GAC. I appreciate it, buddy. Thanks for sending it out. That was awesome. I got that in the mail the other day, and... Uh, it was very nice. Thank you very much. Do appreciate it because uh, we we we've got some good stuff coming up with the GACR game of the week coming. First one out at uh, Fort Zumwalt East, March twenty eighth. Make sure you put that on your calendar. If you uh, we we're hoping to get the student body out there. We're going to have a lot of fun. Should be a great matchup. Looking forward to more than likely Carter Cox and uh, Lucas McGill on the mound. Lefty on lefty, I think that's going to be a, a really good matchup there. So that one's fun. And then the next week, April 4th, the big to-do out at Timberland. We got Francis Howell, the Vikings, going up against uh, Timberland Wolves. Uh, should see a, like a Napudi or, and, a, a, and a Hatchman on the mound there. That could be woo-hoo, lights out right there. So we've got some really good baseball games lined up for you in the GAC Game of the Week. Also got some Friday night specials. So a lot of stuff. We're going to have that up on the calendar on the website. We'll keep you all informed. But today we're going to talk about the youth baseball and youth baseball Midwest predictions. So these guys are here on the show to tell me how bad I missed. So that's what this is about. (laughs) I'm kidding, but that's what it is because I put these together. These guys are seeing this really, I mean, uh, for the first time. Yes. And as always, well, not as always, but we got him back. Haven't seen uh, to the right for a while. We got Matt Shadow back in the studio. He's been running around like a chicken with his head cut off. Yes, and I show up and there's never a dull moment. We got (laughs) prizes we're giving away, all kinds of stuff going on. (laughs) Oh, that's right, baby. Right? Hey, whatever we keep, works. We keep it moving. Uh, right. You've been busy, though. you got uh, Midland growing, doing. 
Uh, yeah. Got some big things happening out there, right? Yep, staying busy. It's the goal, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, what what's new? A lot, but not a whole lot that I can really you know, not yet. comment on right now. Okay, yes. all right. Yeah, there's a lot of good things going on. Cool, cool, cool. Well, we'll have to uh, let you elaborate when you can. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. There we go. And uh, as always, on the screen there from uh, the uh, guru uh, office, <laughs> Kevin Mulder, just keeps baseball. Evolving. <laughs> you just keeps growing. You got you to gotta make it that. You know? you know what would be really funny is if in his office, all of a sudden each week, more fish just got added to his wall. <laughs> I'm working on it. That would be amazing. All of a sudden, it just keeps though, going, going. You look, man. you look back like six months ago, and there's three, and all of a sudden, we get into September, and there's like 20 fish <laughs> on his wall. Yeah, I've been so, working you should too do hard that recently. Oh well, you got some. You got uh, that's a nice big mouth you got up there on your left. I'll just buy some and send them to you. Put and, a small mouth up there. Yeah. I'll buy them and send them to you. You can just start putting them up. Okay. <laughs> there could be a big bear head up there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right there behind him. Completely off Completely off topic, but yeah, I think yeah. it's that's okay. be great. He can replace the old Michael Jordan uh, poster there with the uh, bear head. Well, yeah. Or just put it on the door. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Mulder, how you doing, buddy? I am doing great. Two days away from opening day, and uh, yeah, looking forward to it. Absolutely. GAC, we have the North, the Central, and the South, and we're going to get into this. I got some predictions. You can go to uh, youthbaseballmidwest.com. Check out, I have three blogs up right now talking about each of these, uh, uh, the, the GAC conference in the North, Central, and South. Our predictions are all up there, and we're going to go through them today. Um, starting off with the North, and uh, I know this isn't the most um, known conference out there, but there's still a lot of good baseball, a lot of good teams, and we're adding the North Point Grizzlies, which I think North Point has a lot of good talent. Probably still maybe a year away, but I think they're going to surprise some people. I think they've got some guys over there that are going to uh, make that team pretty pretty uh, competitive this season. I would say they're a couple years away. They're in a good spot location yeah. wise to get kids, so I I would I would give them a couple years, and then we could put them in more of I would say like a Liberty a, a Timberland because I mean that's where they're at really technically right over there anyway. So yeah. And I think it's going to be interesting once North Point gets going there, if they grow anymore, are they a Class 5 school? I know Warrington's a Class 5 school. Um, and then St. Charles West, Orchard Farm, St. Charles and Winth. I think St. Charles is Class 5 as well. It'll be interesting to see how that falls out with this year's uh, districts and classifications. Uh, because I know Holt is probably going to be Class 5 this season as well, and we'll get to that here in a minute. But let's start off. GAC North, um, St. Charles West uh, has pretty much uh, been the class of this uh, of the GAC North for the last few years. They've, done, they've had the talent, and it, to me, it doesn't look like it's going to stop. I think Nuru's got some great guys over there. And plus, I think he does a good job building that program with his freshman class. And when we talk about the North, folks, you have to remember, <laughs> it was funny. I was talking with Coach Zare the other night at, um, they were practicing out at um, the sports bar. And I asked him, I said, so how many guys did you have come out? for your freshman class he said it was something like 45 50 guys something like that i mean that's all these guys these schools here they may have 35 to 40 guys come out for the entire program so this is the difference within the north to the south and that's why it is such a i think such a much more difficult process for these coaches in my estimation yeah it's not fun to cut people right but when you're talking about having to build a program with 35 to 40 dudes, that gets difficult, doesn't it? 
Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the, in a, a smaller school, you're, you're looking for whoever's, you know, whoever the top athletes are, not necessarily even baseball players, just to come on out because, uh, you know, there's always a spot for a good athlete. And, um, you know, he might be the point guard on the basketball team and a safety on the football team or the quarterback. And it's, it's an all hands on deck type approach at the smaller schools and the schools that have the most buy-in and, and get their best athletes to come out are going to be successful. That's true in any situation, but it's not as true at the bigger schools, just because there's you know, you might have guys that are more focused on baseball and don't are, are more one sport guys. But I feel like at the smaller schools, you're going to see more two, three and even a couple four sport athletes. Um, and, and that's vital for uh, the success of their programs. Absolutely. When we uh, talk about the north, guys, you're um, that we're talking about uh, St. Charles West, Warrington. And this is how I have them picked. St. Charles West, I think, is going to win the, the North again. I think they have the most talent. I still think they're a little suspect in pitching. Uh, Warrington right behind them. They have a, a, a really good offensive team led by Cannon Hibbs. Um, Orchard Farm, I've got picked third. I, after talking with Coach Kendall, I think he's working to build that program. And I want to talk a little bit about them real quick as I think this is the team that is interesting to me. I want to see how well they do. They've got players coming back. He's, he's building some um, young guys into the program, coming from the program, coming from like the Gators, the Bandits. He's got kids that are in programs and learning and growing up through that. And I think that makes a difference when you're coming into high school. They understand the expectation of playing at a high level, correct? Yeah, I would agree. I think the biggest hurdle that these schools face is a lot of times the better athletes from these areas go private. And I think that's what hurts them. I know yes. Orchard Farm, for, for a fact, and St. Charles. There's a lot of those kids go – I mean, there's a lot of those kids at Dominic now. Um, but I would say that, yes – I mean, if you're going to run any program, whether it's a baseball program, a soccer program, a basketball program, you want kids that play on, you know, a club, a club sport because right. they're going to get the training and, you know, they're going to be taught. They're going to, they're, they're going to be, they're, they're going to fit what you're trying to do. But, um, yeah, I, me personally, I, with your standings here, I would, I mean, I think it's hard to argue with St. Charles West and Warrington at the top. Um, I think North Point at the bottom just because of where they're at. They're so young. And, you know, I think the middle three, could you maybe flip one here or there? Yeah. Sure, right. But I normally beat down your rankings, but I really can't argue with the first one. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, Kevin, you're uh, aware of uh, Maddox Meyer. Um, St. Charles is there. They've got some kids. I think uh, after talking with uh, Coach Bickle there, I think St. Charles could move up. I think they're the one that is that. Could they be second? I don't know if they've got enough to beat St. Charles West, but I think that's a possibility. I mean, and you've got some – there's some talent on that team. Um, Maddox Meyer, I'm sure you've seen him around, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Senior outfielder heading to William Jewell. Um, that would be the one team I could see uh, making a run up the uh, the standings here. Um, you know, and who who knows? We haven't played a game yet. It's all uh, they'll, they'll play it out. But yeah, if I look at this, I, I look at St. Charles certainly has the pieces uh, to make a a move up those standings or on, on the projections, but I certainly like St. Charles West and the one, um, you know, they got one of the top young players in the area, Brennan Gohring, who's already committed to Missouri, uh, had a big freshman year for him, yeah. uh, and was kind of in a nice situation. Uh, cause we had, uh, they had of course, Josh Newell, who's kind of the, the leader or the star of the team. And, and it's a good way for a young guy to break in. Uh, now, the focus shifts uh, more to him, and it'll be uh, fun to see how he handles it. I'm sure he'll be fine, uh, but it, it'll be he'll be more the focal point of the team this year. 
When we talked with Coach Allen, uh, Brennan Goring is going to be a guy that is going to uh, – he's going to pitch as well. And then the other two guys that you're looking at, Jackson Mears, who we saw last year at the GAC Classic, who pitched a really good game there, but he's had some up and downs, Noah Grambling. It's going to be what they can put together on the mound that's really going to, I think, take them into district play and have another run uh, at the Final Four in that respect. So the other part of this it, – off- it- go ahead. And I was going to say that's the other thing you, you'll see at the small schools compared to uh, uh, the, for as per this conversation, the GAC South. Typically, the best players uh, are also going to pitch. Like Ben Brennan Goring is not going to pitch when he gets to college. He is a he is a bat, a really good one. But uh, in high school, his team needs him to step up and be one of it, their top pitchers. Uh, whereas you look at uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll call out a, a Brett Norfleet, who is a top-end talent on the mound. But if he doesn't pitch, Francis Howell's fine. They got all sorts of depth on the mound. And I could extend that conversation over to Howell Central, who has multiple uh, left-handers going on uh, to college with Braden Rubel and Wayne Harris. And we go down to Zoom Alt West, uh, same thing with Deverman. So, but with the smaller schools – if you got a stud athlete and he might be a, a shortstop or an outfit, it doesn't even matter. He is, you're almost always going to see that kid as a number one or a two on his, on his team as well on the mound. I also like what um, they're bringing back offensively from Drew Blassing game who hit 400 last year, had two home runs, 25 RBIs, Disselhorst, Barrett Disselhorst, 375, Kyle Quinn, uh, Carson Quinn, Kyle Quinn hit 423. He was first team all conference. Uh, Carson Quinn, 313 RBIs. And of course, Goring, his numbers were pretty ridiculous, as, as he said. He had 469, 590, and an 859 slugging, five home runs, and 19 RBIs. We have the same conversation every year about St. Charles West. Because all their sophomores always play varsity, <laughs> right? So it's yeah. like, hey, look at all the kids they have coming back, which is why they're always at the top, because they always have kids coming back. And like Literally, we had this conversation last year. We're like, well, look at all the kids they have coming back. They're going to win. And we're doing it again because it's a mixture, and they just flow through. And, and kudos to Nuru. Yeah, right? Kudos to Nuru. And that's what uh, Kevin's always alluded to about building a program, yeah. right? Yeah, and you're at a pri- I mean, you're at a public school. You only get what you get. Right, right. So, I mean, give him credit. He's done a great job. And I want to, I want to finish up here. Just one last shout out because I think Warrington, uh, their pitching is going to be interesting. But again, uh, Cannon Hibbs, who we talked about a minute ago, but he's got a couple of guys, uh, three other guys that hit well over 300, Caleb Clark, Tyler Oliver, and Troy Anderson. So I think offensively, Warrington is going to be able to score runs. It just, again, where do you go to on the mound? And I think that's a question for every small school. Wouldn't you agree, Yeah, Matt? Yeah, which is why West was has always been. They've always got that one kid. So. Yes. So I, I'm looking to see if Jackson Mears will step up this year. That'll be interesting. So let's move to the GAC Central, where the elephant in the room, in my opinion, is Holt moving into the Central. Um, that shook this up a bit. You guys agree? Kevin? Yeah, absolutely it does. Uh, uh, they you know, played up in class last year. Um, they got a really good uh, ball club. Um, it, that's going to be interesting. I could see, you know, you got your top three teams, how you have them laid out, Holt, East, South. I, I think this is one is wide open between those three in particular. I could easily make an argument uh, if you put me, if I was the, their lawyer, I could easily make state mm-hmm. the case for Zumwalt East uh, or South to be the champions in the Central. I think this is going to be a – of the three divisions, I think this one's going to be the tightest race and I think the most wide open between those especially top three teams there. 
Yeah, I mean, I would agree. I think I wouldn't look. I wouldn't look past South. Um, mm. As we talked about in a previous episode, South has some juniors that played, you know, on uh, JV, and I think some of them played up last year that are. You had four sophomore start varsity last year. Yeah, and plus you're adding another arm uh, with some experience. You, you, you obviously you have Carter Cox, but then you you take like a a hinky. Kind of hinky, who's going to be 84, 85, but he can spin it. Um, he's and he throws strikes. Like that's going to give them another arm that I think is going to give them some depth. Plus, you, I mean, you're also talking about uh, like Connor Mandel, so you, you're, you're adding a good bat. Um, but East has good some good players returning. My question with East is going to be where they at on the mound. Um, and then obviously Holt has, you know, some of the, some of the bigger names, uh, that we were talking about earlier with Hosack and, uh, Lassiter and, uh, Edgar. But then again, I mean, the, the thing is to me with these three specifically, when you're on the bump, who's throwing strikes, right? I mean, that's, I don't care if you throw 90 in the winter. If you throw 88 in the winter, what are you throwing in a game? And are you throwing strikes? And that's where I give kind of a – some of these I, – I just I, – I know some of these kids and I know the history that some of them have had, which is why when I say you give me a kid that's 84, 85, and he's throwing strikes and he can spin it for a strike, that – you're going to get a lot of outs. And, yeah, I agree. And so I think South has one of those – and I think that is going to help them give them that second arm. Because for Cox, it's always been, can you throw strikes and can you keep it together when things go bad? Mm -hmm. Which we saw that last year against East. Yeah, he had eight Ks, but he also, I think, had seven or eight walks. Yeah, and somebody made an error and then it just yeah. plummeted. So yeah. it's that's for those three for me. I think the Liberty can still has so much talent, but I think there's just – a lot of the talent's unknown right now and how they're going to contribute. Um, Washington, I don't really know enough about as a whole to really dive into. Zumalt North has a couple of good arms. They're young. They're going to – I would imagine they're going to be on varsity, so I don't see how they wouldn't be. Yeah. Um, so they would be kids that – let's see how they do playing, playing up. Um, and then – to. But, to your point with the the pitching, um, I was I was kind of uh, on East until we were at the PBR mm -hmm. event, um, and I saw Brendan Pyle there pitching as well, and that kind of surprised me. But I've looked at the roster so far from East that they have listed. I didn't see Brendan Pyle's name on the varsity squad. So I think that's an interesting thing. If he's if he's at JV and he's getting reps and whatnot, I think it's great. Do I think we'll see Brendan Pyle probably through the season? That's a very real possibility, depending. But as of right now, I did not see him on the varsity squad. And you look up and down East's uh, roster, they do have some arms. They have Carter Hollingsworth is there as well. Um, Clee Thermos is another kid that I think is 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 one of those that people don't know much about yet, but I think we'll see him this year. Um, and so they have the returning experience with Penn, Williams, Jackson Carter. Uh, I think they have enough to push them over the top in this scenario. Do they have enough to beat Holt? We'll find out. I mean – that's what we're going to find. I could see the three of those guys, the three of those teams, Holt, South, and and East, uh, splitting the title at six wins. Yeah, just beat up on each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I could see that yeah. very, very much uh, because I think all these teams have talent. It's just, as you said, I, I think you're right, Matt. I think it comes down to who's on the mound that day and are they on. This is what you're getting with the Central uh, as far as that's concerned, because um, Liberty, they had a big loss. They lost uh, Seth Bennis uh, for this season. 
Yeah, Go ahead, Liberty's going to be. Liberty's going to be interesting because they have some talent to make a move. Now you lose a Seth Bennis, that that's a blow. Like that, they're not going to be able to replace that. You know, it, coach, you could go the coach speak. Everyone needs to step up, and that's that's what you'll need uh, because they don't have a guy that's going to replace Seth Bennis. But they'll have to do it as a collective effort. There are some interesting guys. They just haven't fully done it. Uh, Two in particular on the mound uh, that'll be interesting. Cohen Waldron, uh, we we saw do good things in the winter time. Uh, that that's an upper eighties arm, but we got to see him do it on the mound. Uh, he, he started varsity as a sophomore as a center fielder, I believe, uh, and then uh, Ty Holman missed last year with injury. Those are going to be two key pieces to that ball club if they could, you know, because they're both. They got plenty of arm talent. It's just they got to put it together on the mound, and then you pair them up uh, with an Aiden Cole who's going to St. Charles. Uh, that that could form that. There's enough there talent wise for them to be there, uh, and then you mix in a Peyton Braille, um, Dominic on Malignan. the offense side. Yeah, they they have some pieces. It's just not as not as proven as those top three teams, I would yeah, say. Yeah, and you add like a Braden Schnurbush to that team. That's the other kid, right? Who, yeah, yeah. That, that was probably where you were going next. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, no, yeah, I missed that one. Uh, you know, there's a 6'5 kid up to 90 um, that, again, he fits in the same mold. He's just got to do it now, you know. He, he's shown us uh, You think him and like a Waldron, and, yeah. Him and a Waldron can, and I'm familiar with both of them. What what I think is interesting, and you guys can speak to this, uh, when I talked with uh, Coach Reeder, one of the interesting things was that was his first year last year. He came in first year. This is his second year. I think he has a little better read on the players. I think they know him better. Does that make an impact on this squad? I mean, I, I think the difference, yes, that does. But I think the difference is, I mean, knowing your players is obviously huge as a coach, but their expectations were so crazy high last year. And they just, I, I, I think they, they bought into it. And then once they fell, they fell. They didn't know what to do. Yeah, yeah. But now you look at them now and their expectations are, I mean, they're, they're, you've got them as a four. Right. Last year they'd have been a one. I agree. So I think that also changes the perception for them but kevin the players got to trust the coach too right well yeah and and you know i think it's more of just the not necessarily trusting the guy himself it's just right. more of the system and the style of play that they're trying to do and uh just the familiarity of it so year two is always going to be easier because you've you've been through it once you know what the expectations are um, but looking at this, I, I think it's pretty clear cut that we have a top three. I think Liberty kind of stands alone in the middle, and, the, and then we have Washington and, and Zumwalt North there um, towards the bottom. So I, I, I kind of like how you have the central stacked up here uh, with the acknowledgement of one, two, three is going to be a, a battle, and you could easily see that going any which way. Now, guys – I have to say this. We, for one, just coming back to finish up, I really liked Coach Reeder. We talked about that particular thing. He feels good about coming into this second year. The guy, they know each other better, and that goes to what you're talking about, Kevin. They know the system, they know what their expectation is coming into the year, and I think that's interesting. The other one is Dane Goff over in Washington. I really enjoyed that conversation that we had with Dane on the coach's preview. Uh, I like what he's doing. He's got some guys coming back, uh, Aiden Pekka, uh, Sam Pauley. He's got some guys that he's, he's, he's working towards on the mound. If anybody, if, if Liberty and Washington can play, this could be a five-team race. There's enough talent there. Washington was just hovering at that 500 mark last year. And, you know, that's what – Goff's uh, talked about, Coach Goff talked about, is learning to win. He said, we'd win a couple, we'd lose a couple. We'd win a few, we'd lose a few. And he said it was just that 
back and forth. And he says, getting guys to learn how to sustain wins, uh, going on that seven, eight game win streak, you know, and not allowing certain things to overwhelm you. Correct? Yeah. Well, that's for any team. Um, yes. But, but I mean, they could, I mean, they could, they could make a stand. They're, they're, they're facing some good teams. Um, I, the other thing is with – like you take Zumalt North, they haven't been great the last couple of years, but Kevin's got – I mean, Kevin knows they got a kid that's a sophomore, Camden Lohman, who if he throws like he's been throwing all winter, he's going to be tough for any team, and he's only a sophomore. I mean, he was 91 in the winter. He's, he's sitting at like 88. He can spin it a little bit, um, kind of fine-tune in some of the off-speed stuff, but – he throws strikes, so you're going to throw 88 strikes, and you can spin it a little bit. He's going to give some teams some trouble, so they can't just say, "Hey, we're playing Zumwalt North. Let's just throw down." And that's the other thing that some of these top teams got to remember when you play someone like a, a Zumwalt North who has a kid, or a Washington who maybe has a kid, or Liberty who some of the kids that we've named who are, maybe they come out of the gate and they're just gunning, they're great. That changes the perspective for those three teams of stating, "Hey, we can't just." not show up for one of these other games because you take a couple losses from a Washington or a Zumalt North, then that changes the perspective on who's actually going to be on top in the end. And Washington does have, I think, a a pretty good number one in Gavin Matchell down there as well. Uh, I think he's, he's, he's verbally committed to Principia College, and this kid can play. He can pitch. Um, you know, and you you guys are each right. Everyone, they each have a guy. One of the big separators, and this is true, um, you know, at any level of baseball, but I think it's magnified here at the high school level. Uh, I look at the top three teams in the central that you have put down, Holt, East, South. What I like about those ball clubs is I feel pretty good about their defense. Um, and, That's a great point. And you get a young arm. And you you put him out there with a solid with a team that's going to make plays behind him. Well, now he he's got a chance. Um, you get a young arm, you put him out there, and you kick a ball or you don't make a play that should be made. That's a tough position for a young guy to be put into. Uh, and not to mention you got pitch counts and outlasting the guy. So I think that's another thing that really stands out on me that to me that just kind of dawned on me as I was looking at the standings. Uh, I think those top three teams are a, a step or probably even two or three steps beyond from a defensive standpoint as well. Love that. Great point. Uh, finish up with Holt. It's not just, you know, Jackson Bowers, Trevor Lovell is coming back. You have Connor Siebert in this. And I always love to have that guy that's behind the plate. And, and Chase Lasseter is one of those guys. He just has that temperament. He want, he's a competitor, uh, high motor. I, I like him behind the plate, and I think that, that really drives that, uh, that team there. So that'll be interesting. And we're going uh, to have Liberty at Holt. It's the last GAC uh, game of the week uh, that I believe is uh, April 28th, I think it is. So we got some fun ones there. Uh, let's move to the big boys, fellas. Um, of course, I don't think there's any elephant in the room here. I think they're all a bunch of elephants. <laughs> uh, when you talk about the GAC South, I think uh, you have one of the best conferences in the in in the state. Uh, teams that just have talent plus. And at the top of that is Francis Howe, um, Howe Central, and then uh, Zumwalt West, Timberland. Let's uh, let's start here with the, the five and six. Troy Buchanan, Howe North. Uh, Coach Dunahue's got to move back into the south there. Uh, we finally got Coach Dunahue on the coach's preview. That was a really – that was a lot of fun. That, that, the stories and stuff, uh, he's a lot of fun to talk to. Um how well do you think a North is going to be able to compete in the, in this uh, division, guys? Do you want me to sugarcoat this? 
or do you want you me say to be what just you think. straight laced not, on there? Uh, be straight. Let's be honest. I mean, yeah. they're in a terrible situation for where they are. Yeah. I, 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 mean, that's, I mean, I hate to be the guy that says no, it, but no. come on. They I do, mean, if you're Howell North, it's – it. And he's and I'm not saying it's on the coach or anything. I mean, he's going to get what he's going to get because it's a public school, and they're kind of landlocked where they're at, which is something I say com- repeatedly on this show. So it's not his fault. They don't belong in the GAC South. Yeah, it just ends up they're still a Class Six school. Though. That I, I that's fine, but it's I mean it's like the old days of suburban North where you had <laughs> Normandy. Right, playing against all the Hazelwood schools and the Pattonville, and, it, and at the time McClure's were good. I mean, they're just they don't fit. They, I mean, no offense to them, it's just they don't they don't have the talent. I understand. What, and I, I hope to God that you know, in two months, you play this back, and I'm wrong. But I mean, looking at it. I'm not saying anything that you guys don't agree on. I'm just saying it. <laughs> the, the biggest thing that we talked with, uh, Co- uh, hang on one second, Kevin, I'll shoot this at you. He's got 12 returning seniors, so he's got some guys that come back that have had some experience. Uh, uh, Joe uh, Borg Schulte, uh, Trey Schneider. But to me, when I looked at what they did last year, I don't think their offense, they got to produce some runs, and I think that's the biggest issue they're going to have this year is against the top pitching in in the GAC South. It's going to be tough, Kevin. Uh, I was going to say the one thing Hal North has going for him is they, they do have, uh, you know, Coach Donahue who's been around the block more than once. Uh, he's an experienced coach. He's seen it all. He'll – He'll get his guys to play, and he, he's, he's seen other good teams before, and, and that's – what he's going to have to fall back on this year and you know roster wise they don't quite stack up so you know he they're going to have a challenge um and and he's going to have to to get a team effort and then troy you know they had high expectations they were kind of a sleeper team that i called out last year and kind of underperformed um what i will say about troy is they're going to have the best facility in the gac Mm -hmm. south this Mm -hmm. season um so I am excited to uh, get over there and and see that. And they turf you know, the field, you get by the way. Brand so new. Everybody knows that. I hope. So. I don't think everybody knows that they turf the field. That's why he's saying that. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, you know, you you get something new, and that kind of draws some inspiration there. I'm sure they'll be. Uh, you know, they're going to get extra practice time outside uh, comparatively to their opponents, um, and. Uh, you know they're they're going to want to play hard and do good things for on their new facility for sure. You know when you talk about uh, I, I like Coach Rogers. They've got some kids, six returning seniors: Avon Weaver, Josh Weedman, Cam Castle. I think they got some guys there. Um, when you talk about how they're going to do this year, I think it's interesting turf. I want to see. You brought up defense. You're playing on turf at home. You get to turf bounces and things of that nature, learning to play on that. But then having to go on the road, you're back to these either a skin surface or a grass infield. You know, how do guys adjust to that? I think that could be an interesting dynamic through the season for Troy. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that's that big of a deal. I think the only difference is going to be – when you're playing at home, there's some balls that'll get in the gaps between third and second, or third and a short that normally wouldn't go through maybe at another facility and tracking down the balls in the outfield gap. But other than that, these facilities are so nice that. <laughs> oh, I no, mean, it's, I, I get I mean, it. It's I, nice. Honestly, it's not, it's not like the old days. Oh, my God, you have turf, and then I'm going to go play on rocks. I mean, <laughs> they're all, I mean, most of them are look like turf. <laughs> To begin with, so. yeah, I'm going to get blown up now by Coach Perkins, who their field has won like uh, national field of the year and stuff. So, my apologies there. Uh, that that was more of a statement of they have the brand new shiny uh, field turf. Um, That's okay. You can say you it. Know. Coach Coach P knows. 
Yeah, yeah I don't think that's the difference. Too, I, but I problem. think Troy's <laughs> offensive numbers might be higher this year just because of that. Because some balls will get through that normally, especially in the cold. Mm-hmm. Um, when it's not maybe, I mean, it's going to be a little damp, but it's not a soggy grass. So right. you'll get a little skip. Other than that, okay, I don't think it'd be that big of a deal. Uh, I got number four, Timberland. And the reason I did that, I don't, besides how, there's not a better pitching staff up and down, okay, in this conference. But from last year to this year, how do they score runs? They have guys. They have offensive talent. Um, I know I got uh, I got the old evil eye from uh, Carson, but Caleb, when I had him in the power rankings at seven, man, he didn't like. He's like, dude, really? Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I get it, and I really like Carson. I think uh, he's got the leadership to help that team. They've got Carson Ramos. Uh, both of those guys are going to be in that lineup. Uh, that's going to be huge for that team. And they've got some guys that can they can put runs up. Their pitching staff, if they stay healthy, uh, this is a team that could win the South and probably be a Final Four team. That's the talent level. Kevin? If Yeah, the, what makes them dangerous, if they get – into district or when they get into district play, they absolutely have multiple guys that can shut you down, legitimately take over the game and not allow you to score. Uh, And Adam Hatchman and, and Jackson Yarberry. And then they got more depth behind that. Um, You know, Connor McCaleb um, on the, on the mound going to Christian brothers university. Uh, They got a couple good catchers behind the plate they have true frontline arms. They have the, the most talented pitcher in the state and Adam Hatchman, who will be mid to upper nineties. And there will be a large amount of scouts at, at, at every single one of his games. And, and the a legitimate chance to be the first, first rounder since uh, 2009 when uh, Jacob Turner was taken in the first round out of St. Louis area. So, um, but are they going to be able to score runs enough? And, uh, you know, they can, you know, it's not like you you can still score even if your pitchers are, are really good. So you got to play defense behind them, um, and you got to, uh, you know, have relievers behind those guys because they'll be on tight pitch counts, I'm sure. So uh, that that's the question with Timberland is, are they going to be able to back up this pitching with, A, good defense, and then, B, put some runs on the board? Yeah, no, I agree 100% with Kevin. I think the thing is for them is who follows Yarberry, who follows Hatchman. Yeah. Um, Because they can't throw seven innings every game they pitch. And the the thing for for me, for them, is during the season, they need to stay healthy and go about 500. You know, just enough to where, hey, we have confidence to go into district play, maybe a little over 500 where they're doing fine. So they get into districts and they can literally roll out that staff and say, "All right, let's go. Win us a couple it, games." If they and they have another Power Five type arm in the pipelines now, they have a sophomore named Richie, Richie Swain yeah. uh, that's going to end up being another mid '90s guy. So they they got another one on the way. It'll be interesting uh, to see how they handle him. Uh, obviously, you want. Uh, any young player to be playing, uh, whether they have him up in a relief role or if he's, you know, throwing some of those weekend non-conference games or if they yeah. put him, leave him on JV where he gets a consistent start. I, I don't I don't know what their plans are there, but uh, certainly a big arm, um, another big arm for Timberland. That goes to what you said. You're looking at who's behind those guys, who's coming in. Because if you got Swain, say, pitching on a weekend, or even Connor McCaleb pitching non-conference, do you have those other guys that are going to be able to come in? Well, and that's the key is, for me is stay healthy, get through the season, and then you've got your younger guys or your role guys that can then fill some holes to where they can make a run. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they have the best player in the state. 
one of the best players in the country on their team. <laughs> right. And right. he's playing the best position you could possibly ask him to play because he's not playing shortstop where they can just be like, I'm not going to throw to him and you're never going to score. Right. He's on the mound, so he's going to control it. He's got but, it right there. But then, like Kevin said, you have to be able to catch and throw. Zumwalt West, uh, they won it last year going away. Well, I should, well, they won it by two games. Um, they were 9-1. and one. Um, They lost to uh, uh, Francis Howe in districts. So, there you go. They're going to keep coming back this year. They've got guys. Uh, I, always th- I always like it because Coach Goff – has a plan. Again, we talk about a program. Those kids go through that program. He's got another uh, freshman on that he put on the roster. I was looking through rosters the other day. Nolan Sissom has made that varsity squad. So that's going to be interesting. And Nolan Sissom is very good. Yeah. Uh, freshman committed to Mizzou, one of the top guys. Um you know, in, in the class, in the area. Um, and West lost an awful lot of guys from last year. So there's going to be opportunity there for them. Um, this one will be interesting. They they do return one of the top pitchers in the area. Uh, Kenton Deverman uh, is an absolute ace at the high school level. Um, left-hander committed to Evansville. Um, we've seen him on a number of occasions. Um He's going to give them more than a chance every time out. Um, and then you got a guy, uh, you know, Cooper Robertson's going to be a big piece for him this year, kind of senior leadership there. Uh, so this is a, this is a good team. Uh, still has a lot of good pieces. Uh, it'll be interesting to see the freshman system, how he, uh, you know, how he performs at the varsity level. And, you know, there are some, some openings there where they, they might need him to, uh, to create an impact, especially offensively. Yeah, no, I agree. I think this team is more along the lines of let's see what they have coming through the pipeline. I think that's what this year is really going to be for them because they've lost a lot. And, and, and they have they have an arm. They have a good arm mm-hmm. and Deverman. But at the same time, it's what is coming through. And I think this is when we're going to see it. I think it's just one of those years for them where we're going to see the young talent. The junior class – uh, Nick Alagna, the kid, Alagna, mm-hmm. that uh, their shortstop, nobody saw him coming last year as a sophomore. Really nice defensive player. Right. Very good defensive player, yes. And I think that's where Coach Goff really hangs his hat. They stay in games because they play very good defense. Now, uh, I think it's going to be interesting how they solve center field. And we talked to Coach Goff, and he's got some guys that he fully believes can fill that role. You have, you still have Nolan Whiteside there, and um, I got to put my glasses on so I can read it again. Logan Kowick. Um, so there's dudes on this team. It's just what Matt said. We got to see what they're going to be able to produce because they're going to get their opportunities this year. Yeah, and we'll see. We'll yeah. see where they're at. Yeah, so I think that's where – but I always love it because I, I do. I think Coach Coach Goff gets those kids ready to play. They have a system. They play within it, and uh, they compete. They compete at a very high level. How Central uh, is – you know, they won District 3 last year beating SLU. We didn't see that coming. And Coach Beckman did bring that up in, in our preview talk that none of us picked him to beat SLU. <laughs> <laughs> love it <laughs> and I love it. I was like you're right coach we didn't <laughs> that was great but so hey, they, in all sincerity how central uh I thought uh from where you know the preseason stuff and looking at it I thought they it, I don't know if overachieved is the right word but got the most out of their abilities and, and had a great year um last season and now uh, you know, they kind of shift from being the underdog uh, to now where people are talking about them a little bit. Uh, there's some expectations on it. Uh, Coach Beckman's done a really good job with that program. Uh, and now you're kind of seeing the fruits of the labor. And now they're, they're, they're getting talked about. And they're, they're, you, they got uh, Brian French picking them second in, uh, in <laughs> perhaps the best conference in the, in the state. So 
Um, <laughs> it will be fun to watch how this unfolds. Did you like how he did that? <laughs> <laughs> he, put, he put all that right on your shoulders. That's yeah. <laughs> so now, if they don't do well, it's your fault. Yeah, you know. Well, <laughs> it's the difference, Matt, in in being the hunter as opposed to the hunted. So last year we said that this was a scrappy team. It's one of those teams, you know, them and Holt were kind of the same boat, I thought, you know, just a lot of scrappy players, and they still have that. Now, do I think they're a two? Mm, Probably not. I probably wouldn't have put them two. Do I think they're good? Yes. I think the key for them is how is Ruble and Harris going to be on the mound? Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's for me. I think if those two have good seasons, I think they are going to be very difficult to beat because Agreed. they're going to play. They've they've got a lot of people coming back. They're scrappy on the offensive side. Can they throw strikes? And can they catch the baseball? If they do those two things, I think they can scrap out some runs against some good teams, and 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 they deserve to be where they're at. But we'll find out. And if they don't do well, it's your fault. Yeah, you know, I'll take that. Um, <laughs> you know, they beat SLU, I think it was 2-1 to one in that district final. Um, then they lose in the quarterfinals to Howe, 3-1. to one. And it was a great play by Ty Sissel that took away a scoring opportunity late in that game that really kind of solidified that for Howe. So, I mean, they were right there. They were on the cusp. They got a lot of those... Aiden Hernandez is a dude. Uh, he's the leader of that team. Uh, Caleb uh, Cheatham, I believe is how it's pronounced. Quentin Klusner, Wyatt Miller. They got guys that went through that experience last year, and I think they're ready to go. And I like what Coach Beckham, uh, Beckman's doing over there. I think he's got that program in the right direction. Uh, he knows what he's, do, what he's doing to uh, push the right buttons and move these kids along. So I think, you know, Kevin, you can speak to this. Um, Lane Harris is coming off injury. He hasn't pitched in a year or so. So that's really the unknown, right? He he made it back and had an out, like uh, he threw two innings or so last season at the very end. So he's fully healthy now. He He's going to be a big piece. You know, Ruble – was a standout for him last year was kind of the the guy they leaned on uh he needs a running mate to go with him it, you need a good one two punch to survive in the GAC south um so i would imagine a lot of this is riding on lane um i you know i i don't know which you know what their rotation is but just looking at it from afar it seems like lane harris will have a uh be an important cog on 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 this team uh, this year. And then the other thing to me, uh, I, I do like their pitching, um, seeing what they have offensively. Um, they did lose a couple of their big guys last from last year. Um, so it'll be interesting to see, um, you know, they, they have a good team approach. Uh, I think Coach Beckman does a really good job creating some offense. But you look up one rung on the ladder and how how scores runs, they can create offense, and then they have guys that can create offense with one swing of the bat, and, and that yeah. can be tough to keep up with. And um, that'll be interesting to see uh, who who comes to the forefront for House Central, who can change the game with by hitting a double in the gap or maybe even running one out of the yard type thing. Yeah, because the only guy really with the pop that you have, Wyatt Miller, hit three home runs last year for House Central. Um Aiden Hernandez had one. They got some run production, but like you said, you're you're put you having to string some hits together. And those four guys from Cheatham to Hernandez to Kluzner to Miller, who are you putting around that? And that's going to be the key to their success um, for for Central. So, and we're going to have Central uh, against Timberland. Uh, I believe that's on the 18th or the 11th. It's the 11th. Um, so Timberland and the house should Central be a good game. pitching matchup. 
I don't even know who's pitching, but it should be good. <laughs> <laughs> right? And, and honestly, that's what I, I think is so great. And when I looked at uh, setting up the GAC game of the week, I think the pitching matchups, as you said, Kevin, I don't care who it is, it's going to be good. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Because yeah. the depth on these teams is there. So I think it's going to be fantastic. I'm looking, I'm looking forward to that part of it. Um, all right, guys. Matt, I'm going to throw uh, – I'm going to – how? Where do you want to start? I mean – Wherever you would like. I mean, this – The weakness, Matt. Yeah. Go ahead. Tell us what you're not good at. <laughs> we'll cover the rest. Thanks. <laughs> um, you could go down the list of all the kids that are on this team. The coach, there's a reason why they're number one. There's a reason why they're preseason ranked regionally. Um. They Even also re- they did receive votes nationally. Yeah. yeah. The thing is, for them, somebody can get hurt and they're still going to be fine. That's that's the key. There's so many good players. I mean, they went into tryouts and I don't even think they needed anybody. So the point is for them, I think it's win state or bust, flat out. Because I think they thought they should have won it last year, and they didn't. And what is it, Liberty North in yep. Kansas City? Yep. That's the other yep. big powerhouse in the state. I think for Howell and in Liberty North, for both of them, it's win or bust. And I, I, look, they may have a down year because expectations are so high, but I highly doubt that's going to happen. There's just too much talent. Um, they're going to lose some games because they're going to play the best schedule that they can possibly play because that's what he does and that's what he should do. The only downside to this team that I would say is if they get a matchup against like Timberland round one of districts where they have to play against Hatchman. But they're so deep in a lineup and they're so good defensively and offensively that I think that they can hold like team like Timberland two zero runs and scrap out like one over five and work a pitch count to get them out. So that's because it's a team. There's, you can go a million places with this right now, <laughs> right? right? You can, but they're just I, for me. For them, it's win state or bust. I don't think I think if they don't win state, that it's going to be considered a down year for them. Kevin. Uh, yeah. Um. Just uh, we'll have our uh, preseason poll on Friday, and I'll do a little spoiler here. They're going to be our number two team in the state to start off behind Liberty North, uh, the defending champion. And and as Matt alluded to, they're regionally ranked. Uh, you know, they're one of the best teams in the Midwest. Uh, I would I would say they wouldn't fall out of the top ten in the Midwest if we're talking who are the top teams. There's a lot of talent here. Um, and yeah, you, you hate to say it, but you know this team has you know Final Four, state championship or bust type thing. Now you look at their district, though it, it it'll be a challenge just to get out of the district still because you could still run into some really good teams or a really good arm. Um, but this is going to be a fun team to watch. You know, uh, Northlake returns after hitting over 450, leading the state in homers with nine. Uh, you know, I know he's a great football talent heading to Mizzou to play football and baseball. Um, you know, he, he might generate some uh, pro interest this spring as well, just with his raw power. Um, you know, he's going to be forced to make a decision, I'm guessing, sooner or later on baseball or football. It might be a year or two into college. We'll, we'll see. Um, you know, Bryson Naputi is going to be a fun follow this spring. The you know one of the top two way guys in the area. They they you know he's either their one or their two, and a uh, huge piece of that offense. And then you got young guys coming through too. Uh, Leo Humbert started for him as a freshman. Uh, now has his feet under him, and, and will be a sophomore. I can only imagine the jump he's going to take. Um, and, and they have other good young players uh, that. You know, coming into the program, a guy like Jackson Vaughn, I, I believe, made their varsity team a yeah. sophomore outfielder. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how uh, Coach Perkins balances all this out and gets them all playing time, et cetera. And, and Matt kind of alluded to it. He'll do it by playing a great schedule, playing some deep tournaments where they're going 
you know, seven games in a week and, and get guys out there. Um, you know, you got, you got a, um, a Shipley, uh, who's state championship quarterback, um, him and Naputi kind of as your one, two, um, you got, uh, Brett Norfleet, who I'm hearing is back throwing in the low nineties, uh, from all reports. So will be, it'll be interesting to see how they deploy him, whether it's as, as a closer or out of the bullpen or, you know, just, a a non-conference start. I, I don't know what they'll do. And then there's a couple other guys that have done really well. So Alex Bryant throw a uh, shutout for him um, up from the sophomore team last year in a tournament. He's going to have a big role this year, I believe. Um, you know, and so Alex they, Bryan, they got a lot of pieces. Alex Bryan I'm sorry? Good. Alex Bryan looked good at that February event too, didn't he? It, uh, yeah, absolutely. He's now an upper 80s guy, and he's always been a strike thrower with three, four pitches for strikes. So there, there is an awful lot of depth there. And, you know, talking to Coach Perkins, you know, it's a good problem to have, but I, I know that tryout week isn't a lot of fun for him because he's yeah. got to be – he has to make some tough decisions for on some kids that maybe would otherwise make a – make and probably start for another high school team and and he has to let some kids go so i know that that's the one downside of it but the upside is you have a ridiculously deep roster to kevin's point as far as the depth and pitching and that's where you know i do give timberland the edge a little bit but i think what sets how over the top over everybody is they are nine deep on offense as you alluded to, they don't give you a break as a pitcher. You have no breaks in that lineup. I, yeah, I would agree. I would agree. But I would also – don't slout them on the mound. I mean, no. they're probably 10 deep on the mound. Right. So, I mean, they could do the old club baseball prospect of, hey, you're going to throw three and get out. You throw three, get out. You throw one, we're done. You throw two, you throw two, you throw two, you throw one, we're done. It's brutal. I mean, they could they could easily do that for two games in a row. That's what I mean, and there's no, and that's why you know you have that. And like I said, we talked about Timberland, we talked about Hal as far as pitching, Hal Central, excuse me. Well, they're just as good, and as you said, depth. The yeah. thing that that sets Hal and why I think they probably will win state even over Liberty. I don't know, but this is my thought process: is that offensive firepower somewhere? Somebody's going to – you get a walk, uh, and Perkins, he figures out how to scratch runs across. And if you can't handle that, then boom, something happens, and they're scoring three, four runs in an inning, and they've got enough pitching, as you said, to shut the door. Yeah. I mean, the good pitching always stops good hitting, always. That's how it's always been. It always will be, which is why you take like a Hatchman, mm -hmm. can shut them down for a certain amount of innings until he has to come out. But either way, point is, I would say they have depth on the mound too. They, I mean, they're just they have depth everywhere. It's just, I mean, like Kevin said, you take a kid that got cut from this team, he would probably make and start on another high school team. Absolutely. In their conference. Absolutely. Yes, that's the other thing. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, I agree. I mean, uh, you know, I think there might there should be a draft after those cuts to see if like Coach Allen and, and all, all the guys from the GAC North want to step up and <laughs> and set up a selection draft, you know, for transfer portal. <laughs> I think they'd go for it, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, guys, uh, I appreciate the information. I thought we were pretty good. Uh, I mean, I. That we may miss on a few. This is what it is. But I enjoy talking about it. I think the GAC is one of the, as I said, one of the best conferences in the state. And uh, we're going to have a lot of fun watching uh, the GAC this year. We really are. Um, we'll be back next week. Uh, we'll definitely have Mr. Uh, Mulder's rankings out next week. And I do want to touch on, you brought up the Suburban, St. Louis Suburban Conference. We're going to talk a little bit about that. We got, we're going to look at some teams around there, the MCC also, we we there uh, we're going to have that up on the website. We're going to start following. We have the suburban conference up on youthbaseballmidwest.com. All the teams in each division, 
Um, so yes, Normandy is not in that. <laughs> <laughs> and they've split it up a lot like what the GAC has done, and they move teams up as far as classifications yeah. and things. So I think it's done very well. Uh, we got uh, the old rivalry game uh, going to be uh, for uh, Kevin there. We're going to be out of Baldwin. I believe it's April 25th uh, for Kirkwood versus Webster Groves. Uh, we're going to live stream that one. That's always a fun one, isn't it, Kevin? Yeah, that, that's a, a big rivalry. Um, you know, in Bowen Athletic, uh, great, uh, great one, one of the great amateur parks in, in the St. Louis area. It's a nice little stadium set up and a, a fun atmosphere. Absolutely. So, folks, we hope you enjoyed. If you got, uh, if you want to tell us what you think of of my picks, <laughs> please do so. Throw it in the comment. We'd love to hear about it. Uh, that's that's the whole point of this. If you think it's a different lineup, throw it out there. We'll 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 look at it. We'll respond. That's what we're here to do. But that's our GAC uh, predictions and previews there. Um, let the let the games begin. Matt, thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Kevin, appreciate it, buddy. Always. Hey, and if you want to follow Kevin, make sure I, I'm sorry, I almost did. If you want to follow Kevin, his uh, tags are on the bottom there. Uh, as always, Lauren has got those. Miss Producer's on it. Yep, she's got it. So follow Kevin. It's a great follow on Twitter and Instagram. You can also follow Matt. You're at Midland Baseball on, uh, right? Yes, you can follow the organization there. Yeah, yes. that's what I'm talking about. It's not have, you, but it's... I don't it's, have Instagram. I'm sorry. I'm old. <laughs> You're old. Follow Midland Baseball uh, my on MySpace, Twitter. My, can you put my MySpace that's link up there? MySpace. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's good, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mercy. Everybody, thanks for tuning in. We do appreciate it. Shout out to the GAC. We're going to have a lot of fun. Everybody have a great day in the Lord. All you pitchers, keep throwing strikes. Hitters, hit them where they ain't. Good advice. We'll see you all next time.